Rocket Lab has just pulled off something that Blue Origin might need an entire decade to even dream of. 21 rocket launches in a single year, a perfect 100% success rate, 30% jump over their previous record. And to really rub it in, the final two launches were only three days apart. It's a clear warning sign. Their rocket is proving it has real long-term potential, enough to start closing the gap with SpaceX's Falcon 9. It got so serious that even Elon Musk stepped in to congratulate them. So, what exactly did Musk say about this major milestone? And why does it make Blue Origin look totally embarrassing? Let's break it all down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On December 21st, 2025, Rocket Lab completed its 21st launch of the compact but brutally efficient Electron rocket, flying a mission boldly named the Wisdom God Guides. The launch took place from Launch Complex 1 in Mejia, New Zealand at 7.36 p.m. local time. Electron successfully deployed the QPS SR-15 satellite for Japan's IQPS, marking the seventh synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, satellite rocket lab has launched for the company. This mission further expands IQPS's Earth observation constellation, capable of delivering high-resolution images through clouds, rain, day, or night, and near real-time coverage across 12 different orbital planes. And the result? Absolute perfection. A 100% successful flight. This tiny 18-meter tall rocket placed the satellite precisely into a circular orbit at 575 kilometers an incredibly clean insertion that once again showcased the pinpoint accuracy of the Rutherford engines and Electron's kickstage. That precision matters because it reduces atmospheric drag and significantly extends the satellite's operational lifespan. This launch also locked in a new record. All 21 Electron flights this year were successful, a massive jump from last year's 16. The last time Electron experienced a failure was back in September 2023, caused by an electrical arc in the second stage after stage separation. That was the final mission loss. Since then, two full years of growth, two years of maturity, two years of proving that Electron is the most frequently flown orbital small launch rocket on the planet. Following the mission, Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck summed it up perfectly saying, mission success, that's 100% mission success for 2025. Congratulations to the Electron team for an epic year. And of course, an achievement this big didn't escape Elon Musk's radar. He jumped straight into Peter Beck's post and left a short but loaded reply. Well done. And that matters because this is one of the rare times Musk has openly praised a competitor. When it comes to Blue Origin, Musk usually does the opposite. Sarcastic jokes and playful jabs. One memorable example was when Jeff Bezos posted a video of New Glenn and Musk commented, Morning Glory, followed by laughing emojis, a not-so-subtle joke about how the rocket has to be erected upright, in a way that looks a little too familiar. But with Rocket Lab, this wasn't a joke. It was recognition, a nod of respect, and more than that, a signal that Rocket Lab is now seen as a serious player, one worthy of real competition, pushing the industry forward together. But Musk wasn't congratulating Rocket Lab just for their perfect success rate. What really caught his attention was the launch cadence. Just three days earlier, on December 18th, 2025, Rocket Lab had successfully flown its STPS-30 mission, also known as Don't Be Such a Square, for the U.S. Space Force, launching from Wallops Island, Virginia. That was their 20th launch of the year, deploying four DiscSat technology demonstration satellites. So, let that sink in. Two orbital launches, just three days apart, from two different launch sites, in two different hemispheres, New Zealand and the United States. That's not normal. That's a clear sign of extremely high launch cadence and true responsive launch capability. Now, compared to Falcon 9, Rocket Lab is still a step behind in sheer launch volume. SpaceX has flown roughly 165 Falcon family missions this year, averaging just two days between launches, a cadence no other company on Earth can match. So, yes, by that measure, Rocket Lab's three-day gap is slower. But context matters. Falcon 9 flies that often mainly because it's serving Starlink, SpaceX's own internal mega-constellation. Rocket Lab, by contrast, flies almost entirely for paying customers, which naturally stretches their launch schedule. 
Even so, Rocket Lab's rapid progress has made Blue Origin look downright embarrassed. Despite having not one, but two rockets, Blue Origin still can't even launch a satellite for themselves. First, let's talk about New Shepard. This rocket is purely a suborbital passenger vehicle, basically taking billionaires and celebrities to the edge of space for a few minutes of zero G before coming back down. In 2025, it flew nine missions, seven of which carried crews. Each flight usually seats six passengers, and the latest NS-37 on December 20th even carried the first person in a wheelchair to space, a noteworthy milestone. That brings the total to 42 billionaires and celebrities who went to space this year. While ticket prices aren't publicly disclosed, a deposit of $150,000 is required to reserve a seat, and estimates put New Shepard's revenue at 7 to 9 million USD per flight. But here's the catch. It only reaches the Karman line and comes back down. Sure, those passengers can be labeled as astronauts, but New Shepard has never actually put a satellite into orbit. Then there's New Glenn, the much-hyped orbital heavy-lift rocket from Blue Origin. It finally flew twice this year, first in January 2025, deploying the Blue Ring Pathfinder into orbit, but the booster landing failed. The second flight was in November 2025, sending NASA's escapade twin probes to Mars. This time, the booster stuck a perfect landing, almost like SpaceX's Super Heavy hitting Mechazilla. Impressive? Maybe for Blue Origin. But in comparison, SpaceX does this kind of orbital mission with Falcon 9 every week. So there you have it. Only two orbital launches all year for Blue Origin, while Rocket Lab's tiny little brother, Electron, has flown 21 successful missions, putting dozens of real satellites into orbit for paying customers. Blue Origin still can't even launch a satellite for themselves. Sure, that might happen eventually, but the cost is staggering. On New Glenn's second flight, NASA paid nearly $20 million to launch just two satellites totaling 1,070 kilograms. That's over $18,000 per kilogram. Compare that to Falcon 9, roughly $3,000 per kilogram. And in the future, when SpaceX starts launching satellites on Starship, the cost drops to just $100 per kilogram, something they've already proven on flights 10 and 11. In short, Rocket Lab makes Blue Origin look like a guy who's always bragging about his luxury yacht, but only uses it to fish near the shore. So, which side are you on? Rocket Lab or Blue Origin? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, looking ahead, SpaceX is moving forward with Starship. Blue Origin has new Glenn. And Rocket Lab is also pushing ahead with its brand new rocket, Neutron. Neutron is a medium-class rocket, built to be flexible and cost-effective a smart move by Rocket Lab. They're playing the long game, knowing that Falcon 9 will eventually take a back seat as Starship takes over satellite launches. Starship will clearly be more capable, cheaper, and more efficient. Falcon 9 isn't disappearing, just flying less often. That opens the door for Neutron to step in and compete with a heavy hitter like Falcon 9 today. Meanwhile, in the heavy lift category, New Glenn faces a tough road against Starship a multi-role rocket that doesn't just launch satellites, but also carries massive space station modules, refueling stations, and can support Moon and Mars missions. Every rocket has its niche, and Starship is optimized for nearly everything. Back to Neutron. Development kicked off in 2020, and the rocket is on track for its first test flight by the end of 2025, just five years from concept to now. They're about to do a static fire test of the upper stage. This fast pace really shows Rocket Lab's agility and ambition, especially when you compare it to Blue Origin's slow crawl. What sets Neutron's upper section apart is its unconventional design. Unlike traditional rockets where the upper stage sits on top of the first, supported from below, Neutron's is suspended from above, housed inside the first stage tank. During flight, the first stage fairing opens in space to release it, and the Archimedes engine ignites to carry the payload into orbit. This streamlined approach simplifies separation and reduces the risk of failure. Of course, this means the upper section won't be reusable, only the fairing can be recovered. While full reusability is SpaceX's hallmark with Falcon 9, Rocket Lab's decision to keep the upper part expendable avoids the complexity and refurbishment costs of fully reusable systems. This pragmatic approach strikes a balance between innovation and affordability. 
allowing Neutron to compete in the medium-class market without the operational burden of a fully reusable rocket. Neutron's first stage is equally impressive, combining simplicity, reusability, and cost-effectiveness. A standout feature is its fixed landing legs, a high-tech choice that eliminates the need for deployable or retractable mechanisms. Fixed legs are simpler to design and build, reducing the risk of mechanical failure, a critical consideration for a rocket aiming for vertical landings. To support Neutron's landings, Rocket Lab has partnered with another company to build a massive drone ship. On X, they said, We've signed an agreement with Bollinger Ship to complete the build-out of our 400-foot landing platform for Neutron missions that return to Earth at sea. In short, if you want to witness Neutron touchdown on this massive drone ship, you'll have to wait for the maiden flight. Expected in the first quarter of 2026, a year that promises to be packed with turbulence and excitement for the entire space industry. And it's not just those rockets, dozens of other vehicles are being built and tested, all vying to stake their claim in the space race. Take Polaris Space Planes, a German startup, for example. They're chasing the dream of making space travel as routine as air travel. That's how they built Mira One, a 4.3 meter long prototype blending 75 year old technology with modern design a turbine engine for horizontal takeoff and landing from regular runways, and an aerospike engine for high-altitude flight. Initially, it was advertised to launch one ton to orbit or carry up to 10 tons on suborbital missions like scientific research, hypersonic testing, and space tourism. But Mira One's first flight in 2024 ended in a spectacular failure. Crosswinds and a nose wheel issue caused the plane to crash just after leaving the runway, completely destroying the fiberglass frame. Many thought the project would falter. Many thought the project would falter. Polaris didn't give up. They quickly developed Mira 2, a 5-meter-long improved version which successfully flew on turbine power in October 2024 and activated its aerospike engine in flight just weeks later, a world first, a historic milestone. 